Welcome to Pathwelly in sunny North Wales. And we are here to test one of the most exciting new launches of the year. Right beside me here is the Saxdor 320 GTO. Now, those of you who haven't heard of Saxdor, it's a very new company. It's only been running for a couple of years and the first boat they produced was a really funky little 20 footer that was almost like a cross between a jet ski and a boat. This is their second boat and like that, it is equally innovative. So let me tell you one or two things about it. First of all, you can see it's a very funky walk around design. It's been designed in Finland, but built in Poland. And one of the advantages of building in Poland is of course, that it's relatively affordable. So this entire boat, this 32 foot package with a single 300 horsepower engine, including that T-top, including some very funky fold down sides, which we'll show you in a minute. That entire package is 108,000 pounds ink vat. This particular one is a little bit more special than that because we've got twin 300 horsepower V8s on this. We've got a very funky set of extras on board, which we'll show, have you, give you a proper look around in a minute. But all in all, it's 170,000 pounds. But we're gonna go out, give this a complete test, show you everything there is on board, and really get to the bottom of it. Before we do that though, I should make clear that we were so keen to get our hands on this new model that we decided to test one of the early build prototypes rather than a fully fettled production boat. So some of the details, such as the shape of the windscreen, thickness of the hatch mouldings, position of the cleats and finish of the hardtop and interior have since been modified. We've brought you out into the bay and just paused the boat temporarily on this beautiful calm water to show off this amazing aft section of the boat because there is so much going on here that it's going to take us a little while to show you. But first up, I just wanted to point out these little perspex gates, which have got a rather funky little LED light in them that lights up. You may not be able to see it in this bright sunlight, but there's a very cool little bluish purple light that shines along in there. And then they lift out and they swing either that way or in to the boat, giving access. But then it does mean that you can shut it off and you're not gonna lose anything at the back of the boat. It's gonna roll out the back. Then there's this whole seat section here. So you can see you can sit on this side, looking out over the back of the boat, rather lovely, particularly when you're at anchor. Then there's this very good dinette area here. You can see there's plenty of space for six people around this table. It's got a fold out section, so you can have it fully out. And then this seat section here, as well as facing into the boat, it also acts as part of the sunbed. Neville, if you could maybe help push this down. Is that far enough down? Yep, that's it, cool. And then this whole seat section lifts over like that. That falls down. And now this whole space becomes one big lovely sunbed. But the really clever trick is what happens with these side combings. So if we just unlock this section here, there's a, just a manual lock to make sure that they're locked in place. And now press a button over here. And these whole side sections of the cockpit fold down. You can see there's a hydraulic or electronic ram just down on the side here. The whole thing folds down and it completely opens up. And they're not flimsy things either. They're really good and firm and they completely open up, you can stand on them, and it opens up the whole back section so that when you're sitting here, either on the sunbed or having your meal at the table, it's beautiful. You've just got a lovely open view out over the water. So then forward of this, if we lift that back up, lock that into place. We can deal with the locking out later. That goes back up and then this whole seat section slides forward like so and then here there's a full wet bar if you lift this up you can see you've got a nice sink in there you've got two ring burner lots of bottle and cup holders more over here and plenty of drawer space in here and then over on this side there is 
a drinks fridge, fully equipped with beer in this case. Thank you very much, Neville. And another one over here. So you can have two full fridges. You've got fantastic stereo system, speakers all around the boat. And then this T-top, this is all part of the standard specification of the boat. You can see there are lights fitted in here and it's all nicely lined. Nice, firm stainless steel supports. And then the helm itself, again, three good seats, nicely bolstered. They all slide backwards and forwards. Little lever here so I can slide the whole thing forward. Three good sturdy seats. The helm space itself, obviously twin engines on this. The standard boat has a single 300. We've got twin 300s on this one. Auto trim tabs, they're an option. Got a bow thruster. It's got the navigation package with the two full glass screens. Very useful little glove box there with a lid on it for sticking your phone and sunglasses. Charging station for your phone. And all the lights, navigation lights, bilges, panel lights, horn, wiper, everything. Very nicely laid out. Good wraparound screen. Nice grab bar on this side and a support for your feet. So when you are in cruising mode, you can pop your feet up and have a really nice seated driving position as well as standing with the bolster up. Plenty of space and a really good view all around. And then because this is a full walk around boat, you can see there's a little step down here. You just need to watch a bit. And then there's a step up into the bow section. Noting these nice glass screens, the perspex screens along the side. Cleats, again, good grab rails around here, hanging your fenders off as well as holding on to. And then a rather smart sunbed area up here too. Nice little backrest, so you can just chill out in the bow section. Again, speakers either side, lots more cup holders. And then right up front, there is the anchor locker itself, which is so deep, you can barely actually reach the anchor down here, but you can see just how much room in there is. You can chuck all your lines and fenders in there. And then wraps all the way around, you can walk back down into the cockpit and take a look at what is down here. Given that this is a 32 foot walk around sports boat, it's actually got a pretty decent interior on it. The first thing you notice is just how much natural light there is, particularly for a cuddy cabin boat like this. There's big side windows here. We've got quadruple skylights overhead. There's another big window over there. And of course there's the entrance in front of me. And that all lets enough light in for it to feel more spacious than it probably is, if I'm honest, but it just makes a big difference having all that natural light. There's some decent sunscreens here, so when you want a bit of privacy, you've got it. There is a pretty decent bed here. You probably need to lie this way around, really to make the most of it, because it does get quite narrow up in the bow, but there is enough length to sleep here. Got some decent reading lights there, and there are actually two more hatches here, and both of these open up so you can let in a bit of fresh air. They've got the cushions on them at the moment, which is why there hasn't got any light coming through, but they are escape hatches as well, which are also quite useful for putting your luggage through when you jump on deck. You can pass them through there if you want to. Now it's quite nicely trimmed down here. They, they haven't been overly fussy with it. There's, there's just the GRP lining here. There's a bit more fabric around here, but it's, it's that sunlight that really makes a difference. And then the other thing is in here, quite an unusual system but this whole bulkhead folds back and tucks away in there and this is access to the heads compartment so this is all nicely trimmed too it's got this nice light woodwork it's actually quite a nice little bathroom in here you've got a glass sink stylish tap a nice window letting in more natural light a little bit of storage in here and then you can see that the loo itself is hidden under you can, a seat. You can put that down in place. And when you lift it up, as well as a proper electric toilet with all the flush sequence there, 
there is a little pull-out shower, so you can, in fact, use it as a wet room too. So everything you really need for overnighting. So some quite big storage on board as well. There's this big locker here, which you can put all the covers. There is separate storage under here for the ski pole that slots in there and then locks down into that little stanchion base there. So you've got a really good water sports pole. There are one or two little things that need a bit of tidying up and I think the factory is already working on them. This cover is a little bit flimsy. There's a bathing ladder over here, lifts up under there and there's a bathing ladder in there. Again, that's a tiny bit flimsy, but the factory know about all these things. This is the very first boat, so there are a few tweaks they are still making. And some of the things like the engineering of these seats, they're a little bit fiddly. They are nice and secure and they're very solid and sturdy, but they're just a little bit fiddly. If they could be made a, a bit smoother, a bit easier to use, that would be really helpful because it's such a functional area. It would just be nice if it was a little bit quicker and simpler to convert. But very versatile, lots of great features. It's fitted with these twin V8 Mercury 300 horsepower engines and they sound absolutely glorious. So if I could just ask Neville to start them up. Just a fantastic exhaust note. But one rather neat thing is that when you want it to be a little bit quieter, there is this button on the helm, which if you press, Neville, could you just switch the sports exhaust off? And hit the button and the sports exhaust off. So this is with the exhaust off. All you can just hear is the very smooth run of those V8 engines. Sports exhaust on. And suddenly you've got that nice throaty growl. So, we've heard what they sound like, now let's go and drive them. So, twin electronic gears, just engaged beautifully smoothly. The sports exhaust is on, so I can hear them in the background. Got very nice power assisted steering. So just enough weight on it to give you some confidence, but very easy to move around. See how many turns there are locked to lock. Quite a few actually. Got one, two, three, four, four and a half. So decent steering lock on it, but as you'll see when we get going quickly, you don't need a lot of helm to actually move it about. So let's build the speed. And this is a twin step hull. So it's quite nice and narrow and thin. It takes a little bit to get up onto the plane. But when you are on the plane, there's not too much of a hump. It just gets over it and sits and rides very nice and flat. And it's deceptive just how quick this boat is. A lot of the time you think you're running at 20, 25 knots and you look at the screen, it's actually 30, 35. But at the moment, we're running along at 26 knots and burning between sort of 65 and 70 litres an hour. And at this speed, it's incredibly civilised. But you can see it very quickly. You only need about half a turn of lock. And you're banking nicely into, that, into the turn. Very, very responsive. But as I was saying earlier, it's deceptive how quick it is because we've only got, what revs have we got? We've just got about three and a half thousand revs at 25 knots. But just nudge that up a little bit, take it up to four and a half thousand. And here at four and a half thousand revs, we're already doing 35, 36, 37 knots burning just over a hundred litres of fuel per hour. And there's still a whole lot more to come. So this is what I mean. I mean, we're now doing 38 and a half knots. In most boats, you'd really be feeling it at that speed. But here it feels perfectly civilised, perfectly normal. You could just be cruising at 25. And look what happens when you put a bit of lock on now. Just piles into the corner. 
but it grips really nicely. Very confidence inspiring. We can do a full circle and you never feel like you're anything other than in complete control of it. Just tracks around beautifully. Level it up again. A little bit of a bump, but it just cuts straight through it and everything feels incredibly solid. There's no rattling or banging. Even this big hard top, there's no noise from that at all. There's a tiny bit of flex. It's a GRP hard top, but a really sturdy support here. And this wraparound screen is giving very nice protection. But let's really wind it up a little bit. Just gonna trim the engines up a bit. And now we're really starting to motor. So look at this, we're now doing 50 knots. 50 knots, that is seriously quick. And it just feels perfectly normal, 52 knots. So here we are, we're doing 53 knots, 5,900 RPM, burning 180, 185, 190 litres an hour. But it just couldn't be more civilised. We're doing 53 knots. And I'm sitting here just as comfortably as I would be at 35. So I'm just going to pull the trim back down a bit, bank it into a turn. Now look at that, we are just tracking right round, really quickly. It just feels so good, it's such fun. Do it the other way. We're still doing 32 knots at this point, and it's just flying round. And you can do it harder still. The only thing about a stepped hull is that because you're riding on a little bit of a cushion of air, if you push it too hard, it will start to slip a bit. And it's very predictable, you know when it's gonna happen and it's not alarming, you've just gotta be prepared for it because the G-forces are really quite serious. But I'm gonna truck in one harder one, see if you can hang on. <laughs> We're doing 42 knots at the moment. Now look at that, it just absolutely bites in. Lose a little bit of speed, but the corner is just fantastic. Just put it the other way. And that's what I mean, you just feel the back starting to slide a bit, but it's not aggressive, it doesn't slip suddenly, it just slides nice and predictably. But it's a really confidence inspiring boat, it's not the kind of boat that you think we're right on the edge here at 50 knots. In this boat at 50 knots it feels perfectly safe, perfectly normal. Really lovely. Such a lot of fun. You just can't help but throw in the odd turn just because it's so enjoyable. And we're coming up to our own wake in a minute. But level it out and here we go. Bang, straight through, that was it. Barely even felt it. Certainly didn't hear it. Just feels really nice and secure. You could just cover a huge distance in this so easily, so quickly. But look how far that leads over and you can just see the water almost at deck height there. And it's great fun having these perspex screens. It just gives you a better view out. So even though you go, you've got the security of a nice tall bulwark here, you can still see it, see through it at the water running past you. It's a really nicely positioned helm as well, so it's very comfortable sitting down. There's a footrest for your feet. You can just chill out, cruise all day at 30, 35, 40 knots. But equally, you can bolster the seat, put it up, drive it standing up, and it's a very comfortable driving position too. You've just got a little bit more height if you want to stand up and see a bit further, but you've still got plenty of clearance. And you can see they've actually bothered to line all this. You wouldn't necessarily even need that, but it's quite a nice touch. It gives it just a slightly more luxurious feel to it. And then when you just want to poodle along, turn the sport exhaust off, and now you've got beautifully refined 
twin V8 engines, smooth as you like. Petrol, obviously, keeps it nice and quiet. But a really fun, enjoyable sports boat with that fabulous seating area. It's a boat that works both as a driving machine, but also as a platform to have at anchor where you could just want to chill out, spend a lovely day out in the bay with your mates, having a picnic, You've got the wet bar, two fridges, platforms down, swim ladder that comes out of the bathing platform, ski pole if you want to get up on a ski or wakeboard or some kind of inflatable toy to tow behind it. Really fun boat. Kind of boat I quite like for myself if I'm honest. Thank you for watching our review of the Saxdor 320 GTO. If you enjoyed it please hit the like button and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss a new video.